Okay, so now let's get into some fun stuff. There are certain things that are very, very useful and people try to do them all the time. And so now that you've got your first emergency hack, I'm gonna show you how to make your first emergency looping slide animation. So a looping animation, of course, is one where it starts and stops in the same place so that you can play it back over and over and over and it loops, aha. And we're gonna create that out of this animation right here. You can open this up. This is a, uh, this is gonna be the last animation of the previous tutorial. And you see our animation, it slides in, holds for a little bit, and then slides off. So what we're gonna do is, the first thing is I'm gonna increase the amount of hold time right here. And if you remember from our last tutorial, you do that by clicking here, then holding the shift key to click here. So you have multiple objects, multiple uh, bars selected. And then you can drag this off to the right. So you've got a decent amount of hold time going on right there, okay? Uh, so that's pretty good, and then let's make this one a little bit longer too, so that they're all about the same length. Fair enough. Now, that'll work. That'll work just fine. All right, and when you play this back, again, it slides in, it holds for a little bit, and then slides off. So what we want to do to make the looping animation, uh, now, by the way, this loops all by itself if you want, but there's a point where there's nothing on screen. So what we'd like to do is that as this one starts to slide off, as it starts to do this, we want another copy of this track uh, making the uh, making the second emergency hack to slide in. You got it? So it's going to slide off while the other one slides in. We're going to do that by simply duplicating this track. So click here to make it in, uh, to highlight it in red. Go to track commands and come down here to duplicate track. That's going to duplicate the whole thing and now we've got two sets going one right on top of the other. Uh, turn off the visibility of the first one because what I'd like to do now is just change the color. Makes it, it's going to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So come down here to materials and grab a blue and I believe we can tr probably drop the blue right on that red and that'll change the color for you. Um, if you happen to miss the red and you get one of these other pieces, just hit undo and then try it again. Sometimes it gets a little touchy, but once everything's been separated like this, you should be able to drag and drop directly onto the color areas uh, without having to go down and do anything fancy, anything with the material editor or the splits or the docs. Come back to animation and let's slide this window over a little bit so that we can see what's going on a little easier and make this bigger. Okay, so here we go. So now we've got two of these happening at the same time. There's one, there's two. Now, remember what we wanted was it's going to come on and then it's going to hold and then it's going to slide forward. When it slides forward, which happens right here, we want the next one to start sliding on. The sliding on happens right here. So we just need to make these above each other. So click here, hold down the shift key and click here. And now as long as I click anywhere in the center, don't double click, just single click, it's going to let me slide the whole animation left or right. So now what I can do is bring that and line those two right up above each other, right underneath each other. Now, here's a little trick for you. If you hold down the shift key, it'll snap just like that. See how it's snapping on? Okay, so that's a way of doing, of making sure that these things align really nice right above each other. Now. I was holding this one over here, so it was snapping above the cursor. If I click on this one, which is what we're trying to align it with, now it'll snap and line these two guys up exactly. So now when we play this back, we get the red one coming in, and then as the red one goes off, the blue one comes on. Very cool. And it's... All right, so now the blue one goes off. So the only thing left is to bring the red one on again. I bet you guess how we're going to do that. Click the red track, go down to Duplicate Track, and now we can reorder these. So click on track number three and drag it down till it's right below track number two. You see how that little yellow line shows you where it's going to go. Drag it below track number two and let go. And that moves it down here. And then click this one, hold down shift, click this one. And now remember, this is where it's going off and this is where it's coming on. So click on the coming on part and drag it and then hold down the shift key so, you it'll, so it'll snap right above each other. And now when we play it back, it come, the red comes on, then the blue comes on, and then the red comes on again, and then it's jumping. So now all that's left to do is to set up the loop points. So here we go. Let's see. This is where it's coming on. 
like that. So we could uh, we could set the start marker right here if we like. Uh huh. Actually, yeah, that's that's coming on, but there's nothing going off right there, so we can't use this one. We need something where there's two things going on at the same time. So we're going to bring it down here, and now I can hold my shift key and snap the time marker right to there, um, and then use the B key to set this beginning start marker right at the time, okay, right at the current time. So that's one way of doing that. Now there's two things going on. We have a we have the red one moving and the blue one moving at the same time. So we can then, there's the blue, and now as the red one goes off, oh, you know what? Uh, this is the red one going off. So we've got red, blue, blue, red. Now the red is in the exact same position as it was over here when it was just sitting right here. So we're gonna let that hold happen and then hold down the sh and then uh, we're gonna set our end marker to snap right there. So we'll move the end marker down. You don't have to use that special key. You can just hold down the shift key and that will then snap it right to the end of that marker. So now it's moving to the end here and before it starts to move it's gonna jump back and start playing all over. So let's see if we got it. Blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. Hey, it looks like we've got a loop. Congratulations, pat yourself on the back. Yes, okay, last thing to do is just render this puppy out. You know how to do that now, right? Hit output and go to, uh, you know what? Make sure that render right here is set to render work area. If it's set to render full timeline, it's going to render everything from zero down to 12, something like that. And we only need to render this little area that's between our two uh, start and stop, end, uh, start and end points, right? So that's called the work area. So we're gonna render that guy out. Like usual, hit render movie, pick your format, and go from there. Congratulations, you now have your very first emergency looping animation.